See, I think this is the best uh, argument that uh, it's a lot more important to express the terroir than to uh, be be loyal to the variety. The variety is just our way to express the the terroir. For example, what about the, all the blends? Bordeaux wine is not a grape variety; it's a blend. Yeah. So how are you uh, uh, varietally uh, correct there? All uh, lot in a lot of lot of wine regions, uh, it's not about the grape varieties expression, but the terroirs, the winemakers idea, should show. That is that is very true, and I, I think that I think that maybe that's where, if you were to classify the differences, you have uh, the people that are more true to um, what the variety or the region is, and of course, our laws here are so different than you know Bordeaux, Champagne, and these other wine regions that have they they have constructs that confine them in their own ways um but they're completely different than what we have here which is much more of an appellation and varietal focus in in the u.s um and that's really because of our our government and how they've classified things but you you either take nature and you know what what you're trying to capture from that or you take more of an ideological approach and the ideological approach i think is a more dangerous approach because you're then while you may say you're you're trying to be more varietally correct, you are manipulating it to be whatever your vision is of what that variety should be traditionally. Um, I yeah. don't necessarily agree with that, but I've had plenty of good wines that do take that approach. Um, and, and I think that's part of what makes the world go round, right? You have a million different ways to skin a cat, as they say, and, and, uh, and there's going to be somebody out there that enjoys the wine. If... The wine is just absolute garbage, regardless of how you're making it, what your ideology is. It's not going to survive because people aren't going to want to drink it. But there, there's a, there are so many different options out there. And I mean, I, you know, if if there's one criticism I have of my critics, it's that they seem to be doing less to help people learn about wine uh, than what they mm. could be doing because. It already is a very confusing, especially if you get into you know some of the European regions. It's a very confusing industry. Um, yep. Trying to have somebody learn the basics of Italian wine, you could spend ten years of your life focusing just on Italian wine and not know you know <laughs> like feel, feel like you still barely are yeah. scratching the surface. <laughs> so yep. I I do think that there's there's this kind of conception of um, I know about this to such a detailed degree. I know the theory of it. I know the philosophy and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you're going to use that as kind of a wall of elitism, you're going to be pulling a lot of consumers away. You're going to, you're going to have people say like, I don't want to deal with that. That's, that's too fancy pants for me, or that's, you know, too, too much detail. I want something simply uh, or simple to understand something that I like to drink with a story that resonates with me and, and, you know, and is, and is a very understandable, uh, approach. And, and I think that the U S has done a good job of that. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but I'm saying that if, you know, if you look at it from the varietal and Appalachian construct, then it's done a good job of simplifying fine wine for consumers to come in. And once they're able to do that, maybe they do jump into Bordeaux and then they're like, you know, I like, West Bank, whatever, like they, they can dig in deeper, but you've got to have these entry points and the the sommeliers that are very uh, militant about what what they envision really do ostracize a lot of customers. And I wish that they saw yeah. that. Um, I'm fine to be, uh, you know, a punching bag because they don't like my style. Um, but at the same time, they're not the ones out there actually getting people into wine. And if they wanted to I mean, I think sommeliers are in a, a heap of trouble right now. I, I, they're they're more useless than they've ever been. And no offense to the Psalms out there. It's just that I think restaurants are realizing that they don't necessarily need this huge of a focus on their beverage program. Um, and so so a lot of Psalms are, are struggling right now. And I'm friends with plenty of them. And uh, it's, you know, it's not a good time to be a sommelier necessarily. Um, but I also think that if they were if, if they were focusing more on how do we make this industry more approachable? How do we make wine and the understanding of wine as part of our culture for hundreds, if not thousands of years, how do we convey that to people and, and really break down those walls of elitism? I think that they would be doing a service not just for the wine business, but for the the profession of a sommelier as well. Okay. So you would say you are making wine for the 
customers, not for the sommeliers. Oh, for and yeah, for, for me, I, I mean, I make wine for myself and the the rest of the winemaking team. We we sit around and we'll you know taste our blends, and it's it's a very simple approach. It's you know what tastes better to us, and and we, I look at myself as kind of just a regular American, um, you know, as far as my palate preferences and all that. So. I figure if I like it, if John Lopez likes it, or Jim McMahon, you know, and Cheryl Gooden, these people on the winemaking team, if we all like it, well, the chances that you know our neighbors like it is pretty high. Um, and so it's a very simple approach. Rather than making an ideologically driven wine that that is something that you know you you feel is going to resonate with the Psalm community, if you just make something that you truly like, the chances of somebody else liking it are, are pretty high. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. You can watch the full podcast episode by clicking here or watch another interesting video by clicking here. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section and see you in the next one.